Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I know if you watched my video last week, I told you that we might be debuting a new car this week. Unfortunately, it's not gonna happen. And the main reason is, well, weather. Unlike typical weather in Southern California, it is currently cold and raining. So I do wanna show you the new car. I would just much rather do it on a day where it's sunny and nice and so get a nice look around of the car and I'm not getting soaked while doing it. So this week, what I wanna do is a project I've been wanting to do on the R35 for a while. I just have been too lazy to do. I figured, hey, it's raining. I don't wanna be outside today. It's a good little project because most of the work's gonna be done indoors. What I wanna do this week is fix the issue with the AC and radio volume control knobs. For those of you that own R35s, you know this seems to be an issue that pops up on most R35 GTRs. When you turn the knob to adjust the volume, it doesn't necessarily go the direction you want it to go. You go to turn it up, it goes down. You go to turn it down, it goes up. You go up one click, it goes up three. You spin it five clicks, it only goes up one. It's just very all over the place and unpredictable. Fortunately, this should be a very easy fix, and I'm gonna be doing it this week on this car. However, before we get started, two things. One, if you like automotive, particularly GTR content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And also, the new car we're debuting next week, I'm sure you're gonna to wanna to check out. The other thing is, if you'd like to support the channel, I do have the JD Archer shop. If you go to jdarcher.bigcartel.com, you can see a limited selection of t-shirts I've designed that are for sale. But with that out of the way, let's go and start working on the R35. The first thing I wanna do is something that I do in all of my videos where I show you how to work on really any car. And that is, I wanna run you through a list of all of the tools and products you're gonna to need to get this particular job done. The reason why I do this is I never wanna have you ever find yourself in that situation where you've taken the car apart and all of a sudden you realize that you need a tool or a product and you're calling up all your buddies looking for a last minute ride to like Pet Boys or Home Depot or something to get whatever you need to finish the job. Fortunately with this job, you know, even if you've taken it apart, you can still drive wherever you need to go, but still it's annoying to leave, especially when you're in the middle of work. This particular job, you're not going to need very much. The first thing you're gonna need is interior trim removal tools. Now I'm going to admit, I still don't have any. I've been doing this for so long and I've just been so lazy about ordering a set up. They're like $20 on Amazon, I don't know why I've done it, but I don't have interior trim removal tools. Fortunately, if you are in the same boat that I am, there is a workaround. You can just go ahead and use one of these. The common household spoon found in just about every kitchen across America. And I'll show you how to use this. Now, I've used this a couple times on the interior trim that I'm gonna be removing, so I know this doesn't damage anything, but for those of you screaming at me that I should get interior trim removal tools, you're right, they're softer, it's a little bit better on things, but as long as you're careful, if you're like me, if you don't have interior trim removal tools, this will work just fine. The next thing you're gonna need is something that most people have, even if you don't have a very extensive toolkit, and that is just a standard Phillips head screwdriver. You can probably search around your house. If you have one of these, you should be good. Borrow one from a neighbor. And that's the majority of what it is you're gonna need. Now, there are a couple more things, like I might need a set of needle nose pliers. I don't know for sure yet, which is why I don't have them on me, but there are some clips that hold the knobs onto the circuit board. Might need needle nose pliers to get those out. We will find out once we're inside the apartment where it's warmer and drier and I can take everything apart and let you know. Last thing you're gonna need is this, a can of WD-40. You're not gonna need very much because all we're gonna do is spray this on the contacts where the knobs connect with the board. It should clean them and everything should start working properly. I bought a small can because really about two sprays per knob and you should be good. Also to let you know, just like with all of my other videos where I show you how to work on cars, there will also be a list in the description down below. So if this is a job that you wanna do, you can go ahead and quickly scan that list. If you find there's something you need to get the job done, I'll have links, so it'll take you where you need to go to get that particular product. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get that uh, radio and AC control out of the car. So to get the side trim off, this is what we're gonna need the spoon for. If you had interior trim removal tools, it is better, but I don't. It's really easy, you just kinda give a little push and it gets right in between the trim and the actual stereo. Kinda work your way up, comes loose, and everything comes out nice and easy. As you can see, no damage, no damage. As long as you're careful, this is a viable way to go. There we are. And that's how you get the side trim removal off. Now to get the stereo out, it's very easy. There's a screw here, 
and there's a screw here, at which point in time this should come right on out nice and easy. Go ahead and just store those in my cup holder for later. Now to just kind of wiggle this out. Here again, if you had interior trim removal tools, it would probably be a better thing to do, but I don't. There we go. There we are. And this whole thing should just come right on out. Now there's gonna be some clips on the back and you'll need to unclip those and then we'll take this inside. And disconnect those clips. Why is the squeeze point on these? Ah, there they are. So it's easy if you lift up. You can see right here. There's an actual very easy little clip that gives a very simple squeeze. And these actually come out a lot easier than I was expecting. So there we go. We're free and clear. Time to go inside and get this thing apart. Now that this entire mechanism is out of the car, we can actually start working on it inside where it's warm and dry. The first thing you wanna do is get this carbon fiber plate off, which should be these four screws right here. also six screws in here so let's just go ahead and get everything apart. So fortunately, all the screws are still right in here. I think it's a good place to leave them so I don't misplace them. The four that are on the outside are here in my, my uh, dice tower. You can laugh at me for being a nerd if you want. All right, so it looks like we're still connected to the faceplate here. Looks like these screws here are what are holding it on, so we're gonna go ahead and remove those. Once again, it looks identical to the first set, so mixing these up isn't gonna affect anything, but I'm gonna go ahead and just keep these separate anyways. All right, that should be clear. Okay, it looks like it won't clear the knobs. Now the next part's the nerve wracking part. You gotta get these dials off of the knobs. Um, I, mean, I got a nice skinny flathead screwdriver. You don't need the needle nose pliers. Apparently in the CBAs, you can just remove the entire face plate, but I guess these knobs are a little bit wider, so you have to remove them before. So fortunately, it is kind of loosened as you can see, which means you can get a screwdriver in there small one and just kind of work your way in there and out comes the knob. Like I said, a little nerve wracking because you're afraid you're going to break something, but don't worry, you'll get it. I'll go ahead and get the rest of these out. All right, so now we should be able to just lift off the circuit board. There we go. Go ahead and put, don't wanna move this because I don't wanna mess up any of the things that are currently in there. So we'll just go ahead and put this aside. And see, this is what we're trying to get as these right here. These are where the knobs spin. Apparently this is where the issues happen. That's what the WD-40 is gonna be for. All right, WD-40 time. I 
that's pretty much all you need. That's why I didn't buy a very big can. You're gonna want a cloth. That's pretty much a lint-free cloth if you have one, and just kind of clean up the oil that's on the board. I'll go around one more time. Now that we got the board all cleaned, knobs are all set up and ready to go. Should be cleaned as well on the inside. I'm gonna go ahead and put this all back together in the reverse order that we originally took it apart. But I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws in first and I'll put the knobs on last. So when you put these knobs back on, you can see there's a round part and a flat. It corresponds with the flat part here on this metal knob. So just make sure you slide them in correctly. All right, there we go. All back together, let's go ahead and get this in the car. See if I fixed our issue. Here we are back in the car. This is all assembled and the knobs have been done. Let's go ahead and see if what we did actually worked. First thing we want to do is hook up the wires. There we go. So before we lock into place, let's see how we did. All right, let's check to see how we did. So we're gonna start with volume. It's like two clicks per dot, but at least it's going the direction it's supposed to be going. So I definitely say that that's better. Let's see, what about temperature? One click per degree. So that's definitely working the way it's supposed to go. It's not jumping all over the place. What about fan speed? Yep, one click per fan speed, going the direction it's supposed to be going. If I go quick. Yep, that looks good. Yep, don't really use the tuning knob too often because I run mostly off of my phone. The only one that looks like, and it's definitely better, if I go slow, it's two clicks per dot. I don't know if that's what it's supposed to be because I didn't have the car when it was new, but it definitely seems like it's better. All right, I definitely say if this was a success. All right, so now let's just make sure that's in the proper place. There we go. And there you go. As you can see, with about a $5 can of WD-40 and about 20 to 30 minutes worth of your time, you can get the knobs on your AC and volume control to be working just like they did when you first bought the car. Now, I did notice when I was kind of fiddling around with the knobs, uh, the AC works great. Volume control, still having a tiny little bit of issue, but it's definitely way better than it was before. What that tells me is this process works, but maybe I need to work on that one a little bit more so. 
If there's a day coming up where I have some free time, I might take it apart again, just kind of hit that with a little bit more WD-40. And we should be back to what this car was like when it was originally bought off the showroom floor. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go hit that thumbs up button to let me know. It does help the channel out a lot. As I did say at the beginning of the video, if you'd like to see more automotive, particularly GTR content in the future, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If there's a project you want to do on your car, don't forget I will have a list in the description down below of all of the tools and materials used in this video. So if there's a project you want to do on your GTR, you can make sure you have everything before you get started. If you've watched this video though and you still have some questions or some comments, if you feel there's something I missed or could have been done better, go ahead and post in the comment section down below. I will respond to you. I thank you all for watching and until next time, forget everything else, focus on the finish line.